Today, we're going to talk about how to never experience another menstrual cramp. If you're female and you get cramps, you're going to be so happy you watch this entire video because I'm going to give you not only a solution, but a solution that gets to the root cause so you could hopefully never have them come back and not experience a side effect from the treatment. What is a menstrual cramp? It's a very painful period. There's two types of cramps. There is the primary type, which is idiopathic, which means unknown cause. They don't know what causes it. And then there's a secondary type that usually comes from something else causing this menstrual cramp, either a fibroid, an ovarian cyst, or endometriosis, which is just extra tissue that grows outside the uterus and around different uh, organs in your lower abdomen. The problem with heavy menstrual cramps is a lot of women are taking NSAIDs for the pain, birth control pills, Depo, which is a synthetic version of uh, progesterone, and these all have side effects. The actual root cause of menstrual cramps isn't even mentioned once, okay? And I, and I know why that is. It's basically because it's not part of medical consensus, the group agreement, which a lot of times is very biased that influences these groups that then form consensus. The problem is like when you try to look up menstrual cramps on Google or even ChatGPT, you are not gonna find this. And so I'm gonna go through how I found out about it and uh, using various clues. But I found it very entertaining when you look under uh, Wikipedia, under the section alternative medicine, this is what they said, there is insufficient evidence to recommend the use of many herbal and dietary supplements for treating dysmenorrhea, including melatonin, vitamin E, phenyl, dill, chamomile, cinnamon, damask rose, rhubarb, guava, and Uzara, a 2016 review found that evidence of safety is insufficient for most dietary supplements. So in other words, there's no safety evidence on these natural things, but what about the safety of these drugs? If you do a compare and contrast between drugs and alternative care, there is a huge difference. I just found it fascinating that they stuck that in there because obviously they're just trying to discourage you from trying an alternative. There's some evidence for the use of fenugreek that a 2019 study found that herbal treatments using valerian and a few others may be safe and effective in the treatment of dysmenorrhea. One review found thiamine, that's vitamin B1, and vitamin E to be likely effective. And I, I want to talk about that for briefly because, yes, uh, there was one study. It was quite large. It was a randomized control study. It included over 500 young girls in India, and they found they got dramatic relief. But at the very end of the study, it says, well, we don't know if this works with other cultures. Maybe it just works with people in India. But I found the fascinating. They did take 100 milligrams of B1 for one to three months, and they got great results. And there was another study showing that vitamin E helped reduce cramps. We'll talk about the mechanism of that in just a bit. It was found that the effects of fish oil and B12 to be unknown. Reviews have found promising evidence for Chinese herbal medicine for primary dysmenorrhea. And so let's just take you down uh, a few clues to get to this root cause. And basically all the clues were actually in Wikipedia. The first clue that I got from Wikipedia is that painful cramps come from painful chemicals, okay? They're called prostaglandins. It's what causes these. They don't just happen for no reason. And if you don't know all the things that cause that, then you're just going to basically take an NSAID to reduce the pain. Number two, vasopressin is something else that is elevated when you have a menstrual cramp. This is something that causes contractions and decrease in blood flow. And it's kind of like this constriction situation. And if you don't understand what causes this, you just end up just taking a medication to numb the pain until the next month. The third clue involves high parathyroid hormone. There's a certain condition called hyperparathyroidism. And some of the symptoms from that are smooth muscle cramps, tetany, which is like a twitching of the muscle, and spasm, which is interesting because the parathyroid hormone makes the tissue very hypersensitive to contractions. And there's a couple different things going on. One is that the parathyroid hormone 
has a job of mobilizing and recruiting calcium from the bone. It's taking calcium from the bone to put it in the blood because calcium always has to be a certain level, okay? So when it does this, compared to getting the calcium from your diet, we don't have a smooth transition. It's kind of erratic and it can create these cramps we just mentioned. But the point is, when you have high parathyroid hormone during your menstrual cycle, you could be more likely to get a cramp than if you didn't have this, okay? This is just another clue. I'll come back to this in just a minute. The other thing that's involved in this painful cramp is much higher inflammation because of this one little thing right here. I'm not gonna get into the complexity, but you just need to know it's like NFKB, okay? It's in the uterus and you have more inflammation. The next clue, black women compared to white women, there's a 33% more likelihood of getting severe cramps and also a three to nine times increased risk of getting fibroids. So that's just a little clue. We'll come back to that. Here's the last clue. Menstrual cramps are sometimes treated with calcium channel blockers. We're talking about something that causes contraction. So anytime you have a contraction of a muscle, that means it's caused by too much calcium. And so a calcium channel blocker is something used with blood pressure to lower blood pressure and not have so much contraction. Well, what are we talking about with a, a painful menstrual cramp? We're talking about too much calcium in there. All right, did I give you enough clues of what the root cause is? It's a severe vitamin D3 deficiency, low vitamin D3. Now, how does this relate to all the things I just told you? Well, vitamin D downgrades prostaglandins. Vitamin D also suppresses and reduces vasopressin. It counters this contraction. It vasodilates. It opens up the blood flow. Let's go to the next one. What does vitamin D do to the parathyroid hormone? Oh my gosh. It majorly controls it by bringing it down because when you take vitamin D, you absorb calcium from the gut and there's no need for your body to elevate parathyroid hormone to mobilize calcium from the bones. So when you have a high parathyroid hormone, all that means is you don't have enough vitamin D because the parathyroid hormone is a surrogate for vitamin D. And so when you have enough vitamin D, you don't need this going high and you have less contraction of the smooth muscle because now we have a normal calcium level in the blood. And what's really interesting as a side note, some people uh, use the remedy calcium gluconate for their menstrual cramps because when you're taking calcium, you're automatically going to reduce this high parathyroid hormone. And then that massive spasm, that tetany, that cramp is going to go away and it's going to give you a lot of relief. But you're going to be much better off going with this, which is that hitting at the root cause. Now, is there any relationship between vitamin D and high inflammation? And also this thing right here, NFKB. Oh my goodness, yes. Vitamin D turns this off. It's one of the most potent anti-inflammatories. So it's going to reduce inflammation. All right, what about this one? What's the relationship between vitamin D and black women? Well, melanin in the skin acts as a natural sunscreen to block UV radiation. And so that's one of the barriers for vitamin D. The darker the skin, the more sun you need to penetrate through that barrier so you can get enough vitamin D. This also explains why the fibroids, because a fibroid is a severe vitamin D deficiency, just like endometriosis and just like a cyst on the ovary. And there's some really interesting data to show that if you're trying to shrink a benign tumor, you're gonna to have to get your vitamin D blood levels above 90 nanograms per milliliter, which a lot of people don't know about that. They keep their blood levels between 20 and 30 or even 40. It's just not gonna be in the range. Not to mention if your estrogen is too high or too low, that is going to affect your vitamin D levels. You need enough proper estrogen to be able to activate vitamin D 
and also allow the vitamin D to penetrate deep into the cells. So there's definitely this huge connection between vitamin D and estrogen and progesterone. And now what about this calcium channel blocker? Well, a natural calcium channel blocker is magnesium. Magnesium causes the opposite of contraction. It causes relaxation. Anytime you have a cramp, that means you need more magnesium. And without vitamin D, magnesium won't work. And without magnesium, vitamin D won't work. So you need both of these. But the point is that magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. And also, if we're talking about blood pressure, vitamin D is one of the most potent things to lower blood pressure. So part of the solution I'm going to recommend is vitamin D with magnesium, but not with additional calcium because we already have too much contraction. Now I'm going to get into 13 scientifically proven tips to help you never have a cramp again. I'm really excited to bring you a new children's book that we just created called Lucy, Nora, and Freeman on the Hunt for Real Food. Both Lucy and Nora are my two grandkids, and I wanted to create something for them to teach them about the basics of real food. This children's book differentiates real food from junk food in a very unique way. In this book, I go through a whole story where Lucy is teaching Nora and Freeman about the difference between junk food and real food. What's really interesting about this book is this is the second version version of it. The first version, I sat down with Lucy to read it to her to, to surprise her. And I was thinking that she would be really excited about it, but halfway through it, she stopped me and she said, Grandpa, there's too many words in this book. I'm like, okay, back to square one. So I went back, I simplified it a little bit more. I took out some of the complexities and I made it really, really simple so a six-year-old can easily comprehend it and learn from this. I also talk about what to eat at a restaurant and also give a couple recipes that a parent can actually do with their kids to make some desserts very healthy. We have shortbread cookies, we have vanilla, keto sponge cake, keto fluffy pancakes, and we have yogurt popsicles. So if you have small kids or grandkids, this is a great book to help teach them the basics on what real food is, because that way you don't have to wait until they're a teenager and try to make some changes. It's best if you make the changes early on so they have this knowledge and they themselves can determine what's healthy food versus junk food. All right, let's go through the list right now. Number one, you want to start taking more vitamin D3. In the research involving taking vitamin D3 and reducing menstrual cramps, which by the way, there's quite a bit of research. It's not in Wikipedia, it's somewhere else. I'm gonna put those links down below because you need to know about it. There's two types of vitamin D. One type for your bone and calcium, the other type for all the other tissues, including the immune system, the uterus, the muscles, etc. That system of vitamin D, is needed daily, okay? You should be taking vitamin D daily or getting sun daily. And the amount that you should take as a maintenance daily is roughly between 6,000 to 10,000 IUs every single day. That's like 20 minutes in the sun. And because there's so many barriers for getting vitamin D, not being outside, not having sun exposure, uh, being overweight, maybe your skin is a little bit darker, which you need even more vitamin D, or maybe you have insulin resistance or you're pre-diabetic or a diabetic, which really restricts your ability to absorb vitamin D. There's many barriers on top of even genetic barriers as well. But the point is that one of the studies used a one-shot 300,000 IUs of vitamin D3 just once a month. The other study used 50,000 IUs every week. And the other th interesting thing about the research papers that I was reading they only brought the vitamin D levels up to like 30 nanograms per milliliter. Now, from my viewpoint, that's still too low. What they should have done is added some cofactors to allow them to work better, like vitamin K2, especially magnesium, and maybe even zinc. I just wanna mention that because there's really no studies out there that are doing what I just told you they're kind of taking either way too much or way too infrequent uh, the amounts of vitamin D that you would need to create a positive change. So this is what I'm gonna recommend. Vitamin D3, 20,000 IUs, at least that every day with 
magnesium. I would take a magnesium glycinate because that's the best absorbable form of magnesium. You absorb like 80% versus magnesium oxide, which you're only absorbing like 3% of it. And that's not going to be very effective. And I would take these two every single day so it can build up in the tissues. And that way, when you go right into your period, you have the maximum vitamin D in the tissues to prevent those prostaglandins from going up, to keep your vasopressin down, to keep your parathyroid hormone down, and to keep the inflammation down. Now, on top of that, I highly recommend you go on a low-carb diet, a healthy version of the ketogenic diet. Why? So that way, we don't have to deal with this other barrier with absorbing vitamin D and magnesium, which is insulin resistance. Okay, If you can improve insulin sensitivity, you will also improve your absorption of vitamin D3. When you have insulin resistance, you have high insulin, and vitamin D is not going to be going in or being absorbed near as well. I mean, just take a look at a diabetic. They're not really absorbing near as much vitamin D as they need. Parallel with this low carb, You want to do intermittent fasting. So you don't want to be eating six meals a day, three meals with two snacks. You want to maybe do two meals or even one meal because the less frequent you eat, the faster you're going to improve this insulin sensitivity and thus increase your vitamin D absorption. Number five, there's some fascinating data on cod liver oil. And RCTs, randomized control studies, work as well as ibuprofen without the side effects for menstrual cramps. And it's been used for a very long time, even in the medical profession, for all sorts of health problems in the early part of the century. Okay, number six, vitamin E. And you can get vitamin E from eating leafy greens, salads, and certain nuts and seeds. If you take it as a supplement, I would recommend taking the type of vitamin E called tocotrienols, not the tocopherols, because the tocotrienols just work a lot better. And then number seven, we talked about B1 in that trial. If you consume nutritional yeast on your salad, that will give you not only enough B1 that can help the nerve sensitivity issue and the the actual pain, but also it can give you B6 and the other B vitamins that can actually contribute to improvement in that area. The best source of replacing the iron is red meat, not from a pill. The other thing, number nine, is zinc. Zinc is also necessary to help you absorb vitamin D3, as well as reduce pain from menstrual cycle issues. And you can get the zinc from the red meat. It's a really good source of zinc and iron and some of the B vitamins. Number 10 is regular exercise has been shown to reduce this risk of menstrual cramps. And then number 11 is fenugreek. There is a a randomized controlled trial that I saw that compared fenugreek, a natural thing, to NSAIDs, but without the side effects. So that's another remedy you can look at. Number 12, just using a heating pad. I would use one of those bladders with water and heat it up and hold it over your lower pelvis, right where the uterus is, because this therapy also was comparable to NSAIDs without the side effect. I mean, that's an awesome therapy. And 13, ginger was also comparable to NSAIDs on a randomized control study. Now that you understand a lot more about this root cause of crampy, painful periods and how to deal with it. The next most important video for you to watch is on the details of vitamin D3 and magnesium. So I put that video up right here. Check it out right now.